Hey everybody, this is Munson Steen and welcome to Design and Dialogue, one of the most premier institutionalized open thinkers who has created the true institution of black powerful thought in the creative space of art, fashion and culture is one of the supreme true rulers of openness, musicality with each brushstroke. This young man brings culture and the dynamics of black, African and truth to both the canvas, the tapestry and woven images of ourselves that we can't create for ourselves, but created by the Maurice Evans. Hello, brother. So, up, Munson? How you doing, man? That's a interesting introduction. But yeah, thank you. So, you know, at the, at the end of the day, the other day, I, I, I actually was painting a, a piece and, you know, you always inspire me, at least I hope for all watching, they find inspiration in other people. I don't know why everybody believe, you know, it's all original. You know, if, if I, somebody said, well, well, why are you doing this? This The person said, well, the person's dark. You know, I say, well, that's a little bit of Maurice. That's a little mm -hmm. bit of me. It's not as blue as Maurice. He's probably grayer than more purple than blue. But, you know, I've always loved your blue people. Oh, thank you. That, that blue black that gives us life that, you know, we we would all be ashamed of and people would find some bleach and some lightener that just to erase it versus to glow and understand that it would probably allow them to be in space with no helmet on, but you know, they, they're not ready for that movement. Right, right, right. Yeah, that that those pieces were inspired by um African people, you know, you know, sun people. I mean, I remember the first time I saw a brother, man, he was. I was on the, I was riding the bus in Atlanta, you know, the, the Marta, and uh, his brother got on and he was so dark. He looked blue, you know what I'm saying? And I was fascinated with that, you know, I was like, wow, that's really cool. But it was the ultimate, um, you know, stance on blackness. And he's, you know, he looked, he looked nice, you know what I'm saying? He, he didn't, you know, a lot of us back in the day, we didn't want to be dark. You know what I'm saying? Everybody was trying to be, you know, light skin or caramel or whatever. It was like not cool to be dark skin. But I saw this brother and I was like, yo, you know, this is actually pretty cool. You know, and I actually love to see um, dark skin women. It's, they have a different kind of beauty to them, a different kind of um, even the mystery around them. You know what I'm saying? It's, it's a different kind of thing. But I, I, you know, I wanted us to be a, a, a proud of, of, of our heritage. We're, we're African people, you know? Yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm not sure. I know the uh, Bird series um, gave flight to uh, ideology, mask. Um, when you think of what we should have in our homes and you think of having a piece of Maurice Evans, what type of storytelling um, will they receive or should they understand they're taking a, a chance placing uh, something transformative in their homes? Oh, you, you asked me what is the story? Is that what you're asking me? I'm, I'm not sure, but. Yeah, and, and just for people to, to understand, because for me, it transforms my environment. So um, I've got. I mean, you, should, you should pick art that, um, that makes you feel something. You know, um, it's fine to, to buy art just because it's pretty and you like the way it looks. You're just trying to decorate. But it's also cool to, to surround yourself with things that are inspirational or make you want to think beyond what you normally think, you know, take you to another place, space or time, uh, another philosophy, another way of looking at things, a creative way of looking at something. Um, it provokes critical thinking, which I think is really, really important. Um, so you should seek, the, to me, you should seek those, those type of things. That's, that's how I feel about it, you know? So it depends on what piece you, you know? So for me, if you go way back, you know, some people are gonna wanna, you know, collect the, the music stuff that I did back in the day. 
Um, some, you know, if you know me now, you might want to collect uh, the new African series that that I've been working on. This, you know, so it just depends on you know what you are attracted to, where you are at a particular time, and you know you can grow with the art. So there's some pieces that. <laughs> you might not like right now, you know what I'm saying? You might come back and be like, yo, that was the bomb. I don't know why I didn't see it five years ago, you know? So that happens a lot too. Um, but it should provoke, should inspire. I mean, just like anything else, like like books, you know, why, why do I need to read somebody else's thoughts? You know what I'm saying? Um, it's usually because they have a different perspective than you or they can, take you to another place it can inspire you to imagine and, and to dream beyond what you normally do you know what i'm saying so that's what the arts are for to me right whether it's music whether it's uh, literary whether it's filmmaking whether it's uh painting or sculptures it's, it's the same to me yeah when you think of the uh love of the arts that you have being just a full-time artist what's that like you know i what's it like to be a black fine artist that this is what i do what what's that like hmm. that's funny um <laughs> but going through this 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 pandemic some people got a feeling of sort of what it was like in a, in, in some way um, I mean, when I first started, you know, working, being a full-time artist, not working for anyone. And at first I wasn't sure what to do with my day. You know what I'm saying? So you feel a little lost because you're used to the structure. Oh, you got to be there at nine, you get off at five or your lunch is at 12. And, you know, but now it's on you, whatever you want to do. And sometimes you, you almost feel guilty. I'm not sure am I supposed to be doing something or is this enough or, you know, what am I doing? So it, that takes a little while to get used to. Um, a lot of times artists are working by themselves in solitude. So it takes a bit of uh, self-discipline, self-motivation, right? So there's no body cracking the whip telling you, you need to have this many paintings done. You know what you need to do and you need to motivate yourself to do it right and then um like me i have there's another artist in, in the house grace kisa so we're we're two artists and you know we're trying to inspire each other you know what i'm saying but it's it's a different type of thing and but you know and because we're both artists we spend a lot of time together um we're around each other a lot and a lot of people couldn't handle that when the pandemic happened, you know what I'm saying? Uh, so, uh, but we were used to that. That was not a thing for us. It wasn't, you know, we didn't feel like, oh my goodness, I can't go out or I can't stand you right now. We were, we're used to this, right? So the pandemic, you know, and then some people started businesses during the pandemic. It's like, well, this is a time to, to, to try something new because I don't feel stable in the other thing that I had, you know what I'm saying? So there's a little bit of that, but even, even with working for yourself, you have to get used to the, what's the word that people kept saying um, during the pandemic? Uh, um, uncertainty, that's the word they use, right? So there's a level of uncertainty that you get used to working for yourself because you're not certain that you're gonna get money this month, you know what I'm saying? or next week, you, you know, it's not like I get paid every uh, seven days. It's not like that. So there's a bit of uncertainty of what you're doing. So you have to have uh, faith. You have to have motivation, um, work, work ethic. You know what I'm saying? Um, drive and talent. But I've seen people make it with less talent because they have more drive ambition and things like that. So it's a combination of all those things to me. Collaboration, it, you know, one of my favorite things you say you and Grace work, but you know, my favorite thing is 
actually watching you guys support each other in collaboration. Like mm -hmm. I, I don't imagine Grace putting up a show that you wouldn't be holding the bottom of the painting. I don't imagine you doing a shooting, that, a shoot that she wouldn't be in a photography helping the style or mm -hmm. what's that like to have someone who dreams in a space where it's purely imagination? Mm, it's purely imagination. Um, that's hard to describe, man. It's, you know, I, I can tell you, I feel very fortunate and I know I'm in an unusual situation where I come up with ideas or I dream, dream up ideas and I bring them to fruition and in hopes that someone likes it or loves it enough to support the art, right? So whether it's purchasing the art um, or putting on a show for us or telling your friends about us, um, it's many ways, you know, um, and it's, it's hard to describe that, you know, it came straight out of my head and you see it. Some people just like it, they just get a joy out of it. Then some people it's deeper than that. They, they see something deeper and, um, and it touches them in some other way. You know what I'm saying? Um, depending on what the subject matter is and you can see the light change in their eyes and it's like an aha moment happens. And I can't describe that feeling to you what that's like to inspire somebody like that. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 uh, it's moving, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I almost freaked out the first time somebody um, cried looking at my work. I didn't, I didn't know how to respond, you know? But it was powerful and, uh, and I understood it. And I, I handled that with great care. I don't, I don't uh, misuse that or take it for granted. So for those that don't know, you use pretty much every medium um, mm -hmm. that I could imagine as an artist. You, you're in it. You're going to do woodwork. What's it like to create this artist laboratory? And, and what are you doing when you, because I, I got to get a print. I mean, you, not that I want to collect another print, but mm -hmm. my brother's print is just so dope which, um, you know, I've seen these woodcuts, those woodcuts that you've done. They've been amazing. I think there's a piece where the person's laying down in and, 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 and that particular piece. For those who are, are in the, you know, market and they're trying to really grow, and I think your range of prices, obviously huge, big prices, but there's a level of affordability from getting a dope-ass woodcut that, people 20 years from now, you're not going to be able to get the wood cut. Then you wish that you had got the wood cut. Right. It ain't going to be whatever that price is, which is affordable. Right. What, what are we missing as a community by not collecting now and then always having these regrets about, I wish I had supported? Um, hmm. That's a pretty broad question, but I, I, would, I would say that uh, sometimes it's a matter of priority. You know what I'm saying? It's a matter of uh, conditioning. We've been conditioned to, to value certain things and not value other things, right? Um, but when you understand that artists are the stewards of our history and they tell our story, then um, art becomes more important to you, right? And you wanna collect artists that speak to you and speak for us um, describes who we are. They describe what's going on at a particular time. They inspire. I mean, there's so many things. So some, some people, they, they want external things, you know, because sometimes, you know, the problem with paintings and, and sculptures and, and things like that, especially if you're a collector, you tend to hoard them and you only show them in your house, right? But some people like to show off their things, you know what I'm saying? So they tend to buy things that they can show off. So like a car, clothes, um, jewelry, you understand what I'm saying? And so to them, 
you know, how many people are going to come to the house and see that really dope piece? You know what I'm saying? Um, unless they invite a lot of people, over, you know? So I don't know. It's a strange thing. I've always loved art. So I don't, I can't even relate when you don't like art, you know what I'm saying? Because everything is art, you know, from the clothes you got on, some artists created or designed it, you know what I'm saying? Or sold it. You have um, everything from your television to your car, to your house, your cutlery, um, everything has been done by an artist. You know what I'm saying? It's been designed, which is art. So when people say they don't like art, it's weird to me. It's like strange, you know? So I, I don't know why. Um, I don't know, you know what I'm saying? But I will say more Black people are in it than you think they are. And they got influenced by certain things at a certain time. So for me, I remember seeing a lot of black artists works on sitcoms, you know what I'm saying? So that was an introduction to a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? So you saw it on the Fresh Prince or you saw it on the Cosby show or you, you saw it, I had a piece on Jamie Foxx show. Um, you see these pieces and you're like, well, what is that? You know what I'm saying? So that's sometimes that's the first introduction. And then like the Cosby show did a whole, uh, episode on a piece of art and why it was important to her family to bid on this piece because we want to keep it in our family and why it was important. You know, I thought that was, you know, pretty incredible, you know what I'm saying, that they had the wherewithal to even do that episode, you know what I'm saying? And people got it. You know, I think that sparked a lot of people collecting, you know. Um, the younger generation, they collect, it's just a little different. That's all. You know, they don't, you know, they're, and which, which it should be, you know, their style and what they're attracted to, it's going to be different from um, my, my age group and the, and the generation before me, you know, they, they collected a particular type of art. But by the time I came around, it was more urban, uh, more colorful, less uh, drab, less, for me, I, I stayed away from certain subject matters. Like I didn't want to deal with uh, uh, portraying us in compromising positions or so like slavery or picking cotton. And I didn't want to portray us like that. Um, I'm not denying our history, but I think there's so much more than that. We have so much more to offer and why not celebrate that? You know, we're, we're the creators of all the arts here, you know what I'm saying? Whether it's jazz, um, um, I mean, just everything, you know what I'm saying? The, uh, especially in music and acting and, and uh, literary arts and everything, we, we've given so much to the, to the earth. It's like, why are we stuck in this particular place? That place is important, but we have other things to say, with other things to offer. So, I mean, that's, that's how I feel about it. Yeah. Right. So in following up that same kind of idea that you were sharing, Maurice Evans art as a narrative, as a practice, as a philosophy, what is it? Hmm. Uh, I mean, as a creative, I think you should be creative. You know what I'm saying? Create. You want to be an artist, create art. You know what I'm saying? You want to be a filmmaker, go make films. You want to be a writer, write, right? But it's being, um, and you can do with it what you want. I'm not here. I don't, I don't, I don't think art should be limiting. You know what I'm saying? I think it should be pretty open. And for me, I want to be true to myself. You know, what, whatever it is I want to do, I want the freedom to do it. I know sometimes I'm going to get criticized for it, but I don't care. It's, it's what I want to do. It's my expression. And, you know, some people are going to enjoy it and some people aren't, you know what I'm saying? But I think when you're an artist, you're doing art for yourself. You understand what I'm saying? You're not 
doing it for anyone else, you know, um, you may be conscious of, of what you're doing. You might be saying, oh, I want to send this type of message out or I want to convey this or that, but I'm not trying to do a piece to please you in particular. It's really about me. You know what I'm saying? It's like where I'm at, where I am at my journey, what I'm doing. And what's unique about what we're doing is now we find people who like what we're doing and they're willing to pay for it. But I didn't do it for them. I did it for me. See what I'm saying? It could be, I need to get something out or it could be, I want to imagine a different world and seeing us in, you know, or I want to inspire the young people to, to be proud of themselves and not be uh, ashamed of having black features and natural hair and, you know, whatever bodies they were given. I, I want them to be pr proud of whatever it is that they have. Um, so I'm going to want to put out artwork that speaks to uh, pride and um, seeing the value in us, the beauty in us, the power in us, the love in us, you know what I'm saying? So that's kind of where I'm at. And I tend to try to, I try not to put out anything that's going to make my people look bad. My people might not understand it at the time, whatever it is I'm trying to say, but I'm not trying to make you look bad. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, but even from a beauty lens, um, you've often, at least as someone who gets to see your stuff, not as often as I like, but you've taken women who people might have taken for granted as larger in body and stature and mm. just grew these whole queenly fiefdoms. It was almost like you took a woman and made her come from every continent and she was beautiful, bold mm. and, and black. Mm. Um, and then I've seen the same for statuesque. I mean, I think probably from the essence of what would a, a, a pulled out black soul look like, um, you've done that woman almost to the point where whether she's carrying a vase, she looks saintly and like a goddess. Why have you chosen um, to make black beauty such a tribute in your work? Like it, it's just a tribute. They're statuesque, they're bold, they're... I mean, the first thing is I think I think our women are beautiful. That's the first thing, you know what I'm saying? But um, I also know, I, I, I know how um, powerful they are, you know what I'm saying? Some of them don't recognize their own power. They don't recognize what it is that they do. Um, I see it, I recognize it. And this isn't, I'm not trying to do... Uh, not pedestalizing her, you know what I'm saying? What, I, what I'm attempting to do is really remind her that this is who you are. You're not those other characters that they say you are. You understand what I'm saying? We get that on TV all the time. We, they try to say that you're, that you're unattractive. They try to say that you're loud and they try to say you're disrespectful and, um, you only know, you know, you, you only know how to twerk. You know what I'm saying? That's, they think things like that. I'm like, no, there's, she's, she's much more than that. You know what I'm saying? She's way more than that. Um, she's been diminished by men. You know what I'm saying? Because men, a lot of times they're intimidated and you know how men are. They want to suppress things and control things. And a lot of times men do it with their their uh, physical strength, you know what I'm saying? And then they learn tactics to, to uh, make her feel bad about herself. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I just, I, I really don't like that. I can't, I can't stand it, you know what I'm saying? Um, we all have mothers, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Um, I'm not saying my mother was perfect, she was not, but I have so much respect for her, what she did for me, what she did for her family. Um, and, I, and I do hold, hold her at a certain 
level, a really high level, even though I know, again, she's not perfect. You understand what I'm saying? So, um, yeah, I mean, I grew up with a lot of really strong women and they, they, they weren't, you know, and, and you were proud to, to call them your aunt or to call them your, your, your second mom, you know what I'm saying? Um, Cause they looked out for you or they encouraged you and, you know, they cook for you and, and try to give you information that would better your life, not just now, but in the future. And you know what I'm saying? So I love them, you know what I'm saying? I'm not saying I never had problems with women, of course, but overall I have so much respect and love and I want to honor them, you know what I'm saying? Because again, if you live here in the United States, you know what I'm saying? And you're a, a young black lady, if you're not headstrong, you, you're going to have problems. You know what I'm saying? Because you're constantly being bombarded that you're less than everybody else. You understand what I'm saying? And so it forces, it, it, it makes some women want to go alter themselves, you know, their bodies. They, they're risking their lives to change their bodies. I'm like, why? There's so many varieties, you know what I'm saying, that are all beautiful. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, you know, we're stuck on this one standard of beauty, which is so crazy to me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, think about all the countries in, in on the continent of Africa. Think about all those tribes in each country on top of that. You know what I'm saying? Do you understand the different body types that there are from the South to the North, to from the West to the East? You understand what I'm saying? And they're not all, they're completely different, but they're beautiful. You know what I'm saying? You got the ones that are really tall and skinny and slender, right? You got the ones that are short and, uh, and uh, voluptuous, you know what I'm saying? You got those, the sprinter looking ones. You got the ones that look like they run long distance. You know what I'm saying? And they're all beautiful in their own way. Why, you know, why are we stuck in the believing if we, if we don't look like this, that I'm less than? Because that's not where we come from. You know what I'm saying? We don't come from that. We come from very powerful people and we should celebrate that. You know, that's how I feel about it. So recently you added the lifestyle items, ideology to um, your battery of um, arsenal of inspiration to your toolkit. Mm -hmm. What's that like? Why now? Um, obviously for me, I, I remember when it was t-shirt. So I, I'm like, it, it just seems like a, uh, a great expression, but um, what for those people who are now able to wear your art or wear images up that say, you know, this is Maurice Evans, um, why now? Why not now? I think it's perfect time, you know what I'm saying? Um, I, for some people, they think this is completely new, but it's just like you just mentioned, um, especially early on when I was first was, uh, was an independent, you know, first becoming an independent artist. One of the ways that I made money was painting on apparel. So t-shirts, jeans, and, and things like that. And I used to have them and have my little collection in different stores. You remember, you know, you know, you, I remember one time you took me around to, you know, to pick up checks one time. But, um, but so it's not, this is not the first time, um, but it was something I wanted to do for a long time. And now it just seems perfect, you know, why, you know, why not? You know, um, it's a little easier to do it than it was before. Um, because like you said, I was, the time was a little limited to what I could do, but now it's a lot more open, you know? Um, so it's not just, lately I've been promoting the leggings. That's what we've been seeing lately, you know, the videos of the women wearing their leggings and then doing their, um, their walk, you know. Um, but the leggings, is, I've always wanted to see my work on women's apparel, like, like uh, skirts, dresses, now leggings, t-shirts, of course, 
um, I just wanted to do that. And, and that same thing with men, um, with the joggers, the t-shirts, the sweat, the hoodies and all that stuff. And again, it goes back to what I was saying before. Um, this is another way for people to enjoy your art. You know, it don't have to just be on the wall. They can wear it, you know what I'm saying? And, uh, take pride in it and, and, um, you know, it's just another way to do it. And I think that's cool. I don't think we should be limited to the wall. You understand what I'm saying? I don't think we should be limited to a space like a museum or a gallery or a home even, you know, it can be wherever I can, why not wear it, you know, and express myself in another way. Why not? Why not do that? You know what I'm saying? And it's fun. It's been fun for me, you know. Um, I went to school for fashion illustration. Um, so I have somewhat of a, a, a little bit of a fashion back, background. So going into some sort of design isn't so far fetched for me. I know I don't look like uh, a fashion person because I'm usually in just jeans and t-shirts and baseball caps. So I know I don't look like it, but I actually do have a little background. Um, so I like design. You know what I'm saying? I, I enjoy design. So even with the collection that you're speaking about, the Maurice Evans Lifestyle Collection, um, what I did was I took my, the first go around is the, the abstracts is what I'm doing right now. So some people know me for abstracts, some people know me for more figurative work, right? So the abstracts that I do, sometimes I feel like, um, Hmm. Like they're not getting the, the attention that they need, you know what I'm saying? Or they maybe even deserve even. So it's like, well, well, let's put it on something else and see if they'll consume it differently. You know what I'm saying? And when you do, it's like, wow, they enjoy it. You know, they you know, it seem like they could see it the other way, you know what I'm saying? But they definitely see it this way. I just find it fascinating, you know what I'm saying? So um, it's been fun to do. Now, I'm not just slapping my artwork on there. It's design. So I'm designing it. It's like, okay, you know, do I need to manipulate this? Do I need to change that? Do I need to whatever, right? So it's a little bit of design in there as well. So I'm not just like taking an image and slapping it on a t-shirt. It's not like that, you know. But, you know, it's funny to hear you share that when you know, for people who've been in the Maury Sevens family for a minute, you know, the Bengals were a part of that whole, exactly. whole, whole kind of like if you miss collecting the Bengals, you you just missed. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? And I've got uh, uh, friends, obviously, um, my wife has some, but obviously the friends that I share them with, they always, uh, even they take a picture and one, they'll look at this, you know, <laughs> you're like, oh, okay. But um, you've always pushed that envelope, which I, I, I would encourage anyone when you support an artist to support them over time so you can take the journey with them as they invite you into their universe. Mm -hmm. I think each artist is in their own universe. Yes. And they have their own planets to kind of like, Today I reside on the abstract. So like if, if you're looking for a figure, you're gonna miss me today because I'm not there. Mm -hmm. um, so probably the most powerful picture in my collection is, is just one you did early on, abstract. But your use of gold and, and, and metallics in that, and then the uh, obviously the power of your imagination. And you know, I'm waiting for the animals to come back around. Because uh, I, I think you're going, you're going way back. Yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> you going way back. Yeah. So people don't realize they even did that. So I did a did a series of uh, elephants uh, that you're talking about. I did a series of uh, bulls, actually. I don't know if you've ever seen those. I, I did. I just didn't get one. I did. Yeah. I did see. That's how I ended up with the Steve. I, okay. I, yeah, that's I, right. And I did the, <laughs> the horses for you. Exactly. So yeah. And I did a series of them. I just do one one painting but um so yeah you know um those were fun I, you know some artists wouldn't do that because they wouldn't feel like it fit in what they do you know and i'm like you know why not it's it's fun but like the the when i first started doing those elephants those were 
a tribute to, um, it was like a Madonna to me, like mother and child piece to me. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, especially when I started really getting into how elephants think and how they're very much about family and they don't, they don't like leaving each other behind. They mourn their death. They, 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 I mean, they do such incredible things that you didn't, you don't think they would do, but they, they do, you know what I'm saying? So that was sort of a, so that's why I did that series. I did a series of those, you know, and, and, and then um, those bulls I was doing, those were inspired because um, my mother was a Taurus, you know, even though I'm not into Zodiacs like that, but she's a Taurus. And I was like, I'm going to do this series um, um, dedicated to her. So I did those. Um, and uh, the, the horses for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. No, I, I can't wait till you come back to the in, interpretation of that, but we got to play with that because I thought your use of particularly animals and movement and shapes was just still kind of like not in our homes. You know what I'm saying? It just still <laughs> hadn't, we're still not certain, you know, we're not the bird people, but we should allow Africa or that steed, you know, you're sitting there in my office and people just go stand up in front of the picture, like it's they picture, you know, mm -hmm. and they're like, wow, you know, cause it's, mm -hmm. it's moving. And, and mm -hmm. I remember the bulls and the angles uh, that you capture, man, that's something that, but, you know, obviously you continue to move. So this person said, aren't you still doing jazz? Uh, what, what do you say to that person? Uh, um, I say to them, no, I don't really do it anymore. I mean, I will do it if, if, uh, if the commission is, is interesting and worth it, I might do it for you. You know what I'm saying? But I don't do it. And I have some little pieces around, you know what I'm saying? That I, I kept and, um, I did a series of small ones. So, if, you know, I can show you what I got, you know what I'm saying? But I'm not at home working on jazz pieces, not like that at, at all. I don't know, your boxer pieces were pretty phenomenal. No, thank you. Thank yeah, you. yeah, mm. yeah. I thought that was a nice, and I'm not sure people see that diversity and all that you've hit them in the head with over time. No, because a lot of this is uh, uh, pre-internet, uh, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So some, <laughs> some stuff is, you know, it wasn't in social media like it is now. So no, they didn't, they didn't see it, you know. Um, I guess I could post some old stuff on a throwback Thursday or something like that, you know what I'm saying? But uh, yeah, I mean, you tend to move on. And then, you know, for us, you said something earlier, he's talking about, you know, us not having certain type of pieces in our homes. You know, we've, you know, you and I have talked about this a lot. You know, I think black people are still in that stage where they want to see themselves because they're not used to seeing themselves in a certain way. You know what I'm saying? So they're, they're still, that's what they're still searching for. You know what I'm saying? And you have some that are like, no, we get it. We, th we think, you know, a little deeper or different. I'm not going to say deeper, you know, but different. We want to see something else. So you definitely have that crowd, you know what I'm saying? But overall, um, we're still wanting to see ourselves. And you can see that in other, uh, in other genres, it's like, you know, why is it on, on TV that we still get the same type of show? And why do we still support it? You know what I'm saying? I think we're supporting it not because we like the type of show, it's that we get to see ourselves. You understand what I'm saying? Because I mean, me personally, I ain't got to see another series about drugs ever again. <laughs> I've seen enough. You know what I'm saying? I get it. And the acting is good, but sometimes I still find myself watching them because I want to see us. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so I think that's what, what we're caught into. But I do think if you give them an option or offer them something else, I think those people will come to that as well. You know what I'm saying? So I do like um, what's the what's the girl Issa? I like her, Issa Rae. I like her show. I like um, what's the young lady's name? She has she got she got an award for the show. I I may destroy you. You know what I'm talking about? 
She's a British, black British girl. I, I, my, I watched Christina watch that. It yeah. was, the, the yeah. pink hair threw me way, way, way. <laughs> it, it was it was such a bad wig. I I didn't know if you know I I, I have I enjoyed the conversation, mm -hmm. love the message. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes I'm like, I need to be the Munson police mm -hmm. and, and walk through here. I, I one of my dear friends who writes. Uh, and works with uh, Ava, um, Felicia Pride just had uh, Really Love. I don't know if you've seen Really Love yet, mm -hmm. uh, but she has Blair Underwood. And like you say, you want to see Blair. Yeah. And she has uh, Kofi. Mm -hmm. And then she has, she got, a, she got an all-star cast. Takes mm -hmm. place in DC about mm -hmm. an artist. Mm -hmm. and now, you know, I'm all the way in. I, I ain't even... You know, I'm, I'm in, it's a brother, it's an artist. And, right. and there were just a couple moments that I was like, well, if I was depicting Maurice in a movie, would I have me buying his gas? Would I ever show that moment? Mm -hmm. And if I showed that moment, I would have him reciprocating, hooking me up, you know what I'm saying? And, mm -hmm. and, and it, it was never acknowledged. Like, you know, at the end she paid for his gas, but she got a, uh, uh, a 36 by 48 in her house mm. that he just gave us. So, I mean, you know, that's a hundred gas tanks because he blows up in the movie. And at the same time, she was close to her dad, which was so super dope, you know? Mm -hmm. And um, when we were talking, obviously I love her. So it ain't one of those things where I'm, I'm hating. I said, well, you know, the next time you had a dad, you've got to have a dad and his daughter have a conversation. Right. Like, that was missing. We knew her mom didn't like her boyfriend. Her mom got to say that twice. That yeah. was two, that was two times too many, because yeah. I needed the dad to say whatever it was. He could double down on that, or he could have said something. And then, if he's rich, then let him hook the brother up, at mm -hmm. least buy a piece and say, you know, you ain't got to. I heard that you know you, you she got your gas. Just sell me something on the low, and I'm just gonna what's your rent for six months? You know something. Uh -huh. And I think that that dialogue sometimes for me is the missing moment. I love the girl talked about um, that you were speaking of. I love the action. I love the idea. Um, it was uh, well shot. Uh, uh -huh. I love that she was very black. So it really, um, you know, conveyed. London has to be clearly one of the most ugly housing locations anytime I see it. It's, it's nothing like America. So, I'm, you know, and you've been there, so it's always a little darker uh, uh, than I like. But uh, um, yeah, I, I enjoyed that. Uh, funny you should say that. But the conversation in the lens is, is uh, it's slow to grow. I mean, I, I uh, uh, funny you should say that. I say I never wanted to see Mary J. Blige as a drug dealer. I never wanted to see that. She could have saved me from that. I never, right. I never wanted to see her start doing that. All right. Be a nurse. I mean, like you, you know what I'm saying? Like, inspire some nurses. Why, why can't why can we get shows about black people in uh in space? Why can't we get black sci-fi? No, no, no. The question for that one is how did you not have a continent in the Game of Thrones? I I, I like for that, like, like, like for that, there should be a tax, like a creative tax. Right. Not only did you like in all the worlds, you just didn't even like give us a world. Right. The White Walkers got a whole legion. Right. And powers. We we should have had the, you know, we could just make us blind and black. We mm -hmm. can see when nobody else can see. In daytime and nighttime, we can see. Mm -hmm. But you know, that script in in the ideas that you're talking about artistically, um, we're invisible still. And it's almost invisible to the imagination of our own people. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we said all that to say that this is why we still want to see ourselves, uh, you know, figuratively in, in, in visual art. You know what I'm saying? But, uh, yeah, it'd be nice one day when we can think beyond that. You know what I'm saying? I love figurative work now. Don't get me wrong. I love it. But there's more. You know what I'm saying? Right. If, if for anybody who wouldn't understand or want to just kind of hear in a design and dialogue way, how you describe your brand, what would you describe your brand as? You talking about the Maurice Evans lifestyle brand? 
Yeah, just, you know, Maurice Evans in general, because I think anybody on the lifestyle brand is, is kind of like a gift because, I you know, it, it's a gift to be able to carry the torch and, you know, light people up with what it is. So, um, but just as, as a brand, given that you've done so much um, creativity in the Black universe, creating a Black universe, I think, like if somebody just dives into you, there's a black universe and all the things, the 2000 images that are behind you, the person close one eye and just cover one area. You got a whole separate story uh, behind you. How would you describe your brand? Uh, a black man that loves being black, despite all our issues. You know what I'm saying? I, I love being black and I, I love us. You know what I'm saying? I want to celebrate, and it's a celebration of us. You know, that's really in a nutshell of what's, what it is, you know, um, and having pride in us and, and, and um, taking care of us. You know what I'm saying? Because I, I, I think art can do a lot of things for you. It can um, definitely give you an escape. You know what I'm saying? It can calm your your soul down as well, you know what I'm saying? It can be therapeutic. Um, Cause even, you know, a lot of people don't understand that even the colors that you may choose to use can, can serve as a form of therapy, you know what I'm saying? And again, I've always wanted my work to be a celebration of us, you know? So that's basically how I see it. It's just, again, um, if you love black folks and you love being black, right, then you should be able to get into the work, you know, and um, black doesn't always look the way you think it should look though, you know what I'm saying? So, you know, black is, is abstract, you know what I'm saying? It is, it's a, um, it's not a, it's not always linear. It's not a linear way of thinking, you know what I'm saying? It's not so um, literal. And that makes us who we are, you know what I'm saying? We're very imaginative people. I mean, just think about the things that we've created and, you know, you, you always have to ask yourself, where, where would that ever come from? Who would ever think that? You know what I'm saying? And, um, and you understand that those are the people that you come from, right? You have to be proud of that. You know, just, you know, I heard somebody, they was talking about, um, you know how, every now and then groups of people tell us to go back home, or, you know, go back to Africa and stuff like that, right? And so it's like, uh, remember somebody saying, yes, I'll go home is, and we're gonna take all this stuff with us that we created, you know what I'm saying? And when you really think about it that way, you're like, wow, this, they wouldn't be left with anything, would they? You know what I'm saying? And so once you understand that, then you have to have pride and and being black, you know what I'm saying? You just have to. Um, but I think we need to expand our definition of what that is, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's more than just hip hop, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's more than that. It's more than um, how they portray us on TV. It's more than that. Well, I want to thank you for the time with Design and Dialogue. Uh, thanks for the gifts that you give to uh, the culture and the world. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mr. Maurice Evans, Maurice Evans Lifestyle, uh, but more than anything, a dear friend and brother on Design and Dialogue. This is his moment, his brand, and we thank you for it, brother. Thank you for having me, Muslim. I really appreciate it, man.